Okay, now suppose I actually want to use the uh, function that I've just developed. I'm going to just clear the window. Uh, clear the workspace, sorry, and then clear the window. So workspace is empty, window is empty. Um, suppose I want to use this function now um, for something useful. We've seen how I can do that on the um, in the command line, command window. But suppose I want to actually make a make a run file now. So I can I can do this outside of the command window and just press run with a run file instead. Um, so to do that, I want to open a new script. Okay. Um, and I'm not writing a new function here. I'm just going to use a function this time. So I don't need to write the word function. But what I do need is to think about what are the inputs into this um, into this function. Okay, so if I take that now, if I just paste that in there and run that, okay, I'm going to have to give it a name. Um, I'm going to call it run air props. Overwrite that. I did one earlier. Okay, so I've given it a name. If I run that now, it's just going to do exactly. It's just going to do exactly what I did in the command window. It's just going to run as if I pressed pressed enter in the in the command command window. Um, but I want to do something a bit cleverer than that. I want to prename my input so that I have to write the number in here. So I'm going to delete that now. Write in press and temp instead. I'm going to predefine these variables instead here. Okay, now if I run that now, okay, um, we the reason we're getting temp there but nothing else is because temp is the only variable that we didn't suppress with a semicolon. Remember that? So if I pre suppress temp with a semicolon now, run that. Okay, we don't get anything in the workspace, in the command window, sorry. However, if we go to the workspace, we see that our outputs are there and our inputs are there. Okay. Now, if you noticed in here, we don't see, what we don't see in here is, um, are the two constants that are in our function. We don't see in the workspace R and we don't see gamma. And that's because they're hidden within the actual function. So the function only... Um, uses what's in this, what's enclosed within it. It doesn't need any more inputs other than, or it ought not to need any more inputs other than what are written in these two uh, parentheses. Okay. If it needs anything else in addition to these two inputs, then it'll throw up an error as we, as I think we saw in the last video. Um, but they, what, what also, what, what it also means is that these two uh, constants are not are not used anywhere else by your run file. Okay, so they don't appear anywhere. They're just all sort of happening behind the scenes. Okay, so we don't see the R and the gamma in the workspace. Okay, so what we've done there is we've we've pre-allocated or pre-named the inputs that we want. So pressure one hundred one three two five and temperature two eight eight point one five. Now what this means is we can actually put in multiple inputs here. We can actually start introducing arrays and matrices. So pressure 101325, that's sea level pressure. Well, what if we wanted to find density at a different altitude? Let's say at 80,000 um, um, pressure of 80,000 pascals, but with the same temperature. What happens to these two properties now? Let's run that. And see what we get. So go to the workspace. We have our two pressures that we inputted, and we've now got two densities. Okay, so MATLAB's, MATLAB's clever enough to know that um, there will be two um, a, a, an array of densities now, just as long as the input array. Now, if you notice, with speed of sound, we only had one output. And that's because speed of sound only depends upon the temperature, and we've only put in one temperature there. Okay. Um, so that would happen if we put multiple 60,000, 40,000, etc. 
run it again. The density also replicates the size of pressure. Now this is okay, but it's not the best way of doing things because if I put in um, uh, temperature 288270260, these are just random numbers really. They don't replicate the, uh, the, the ISA. If I run that now, let's see what happens. We get a range of um, temperatures, okay? But you notice what happened to our density. We've only got one value now. And that's because MATLAB doesn't know which temperatures to use in the formula for density, okay? We haven't told it anything about um, which which uh, uh, part of the array to use to calculate the density, okay? So it's getting confused, and so it's just using as a default the first um, the first variable. If your function's only uh, got one um, varying variable, if you like, uh, one array, then it's it, it can output the multiple, um, uh, um, it can output the density as an array as well. But as soon as you introduce a second array, so that's pressure array and a temperature array, then MATLAB doesn't know how to, which, which um, values to match with each other. Okay, I hope that makes, makes sense. As I said, I'm not a, a MATLAB tutor. Um, so how do we get around this problem? Well, we can introduce a for loop. We can say for n equals 1 to 4. Density n. Speed of sound n equals pressure n. Temperature n. And what you notice is MATLAB is underlined these variables. Um, it does that as a precaution. Now let's see if it runs first. Looks like it's run. We'll go to the workspace. Okay, we have four values of density now. We have four values of speed of sound. And I know, because this is a, a for loop, that when n is equal to 1, it's going to use the first instance in the array of pressure and the first in, uh, index of temperature um, for n equals 1 and it's going to output into the density variable the first space in the density variable it's going to assign um, uh, as the, the initial output the first output for n equals 2 the second um, index in density and speed of sound will relate to this function being calculated on the second index of pressure and second index of temperature. Okay. So why is density and why is dense and speed of sound underlined? Well that's because we've not uh, what we call pre-allocated um, uh, the function. So MATLAB doesn't like this because it doesn't know how big that um, variable is going to be. So what you can do to help MATLAB is to pre-allocate the variable. So if you know that density is going to be four uh, spaces big, if you like, you can pre-allocate it. Okay. So what I've done there is I've said that I want to create a variable called density that's got um, four empty spaces in its array, so it's effectively a four element uh, array full of zeros. Same with speed of sound. So zeros here is also a function. So if I just show you what that means, if I copy that into the workspace, okay, it's giving me an empty array. Okay. Mm. 
I just realized I've put zero in there. Try that again. Okay. Let's just clear that. Because that should have been a matrix, an array rather than a matrix. Okay, so this has created a 4x4 four four matrix. If I want to create a 4x1 matrix, I've got to tell it that I only want one, one column. Okay, there we go. So now my... Um, Output's gonna gonna look something like that. So each of these zeros is actually gonna correspond to a value. Um, although, well, let's try and run that. Let's see what happens. Oops. Okay. So that's run successfully now. Now, generally, what I've done there, a bit of a mistake because pressure is actually written as a as a one by four matrix, whereas the output is a four by one matrix. And that's okay in this example because it's nothing too complicated, and MATLAB knows how to deal with it because we've only put one value in here. But really, to be more um, to help us in future, it's best to actually be consistent with your um, with your uh, arrangement of of your matrices or, or arrays. So I'm going to change that to 1, 4, 1, 4, and then also modify this so it's 1, n, 1, n, 1, n, 1, n. Okay, so if I run that now, then we get speed of sound is now one by four matrix and um, density is density is also one by four matrix. Okay, so hopefully you get the picture now. Um, also, good practice, or rather something that's, that's, that I tend to do, I tend to clear, type clear and CLC. And that just cleans everything up before I run my file. But don't be putting that if you've got things in the workspace that you need to save, because um, it'll just clear them. But I tend to do it with with, um, with my run files because I want a nice empty workspace. I don't want to be running running run files um, and populating my workspace space with stuff that I don't. Uh, that I'm not sure where it came from. Um, okay, I think that's it for using the uh, function. Um, so thanks for listening.